When you hear the word self-racing cars, you probably imagine high-end autonomous vehicles zipping around a track at dizzying speeds. Well, not really. In late May, a dozen or so teams came to California's Thunder Hill Raceway to participate in what was called the first installment of the self-racing cars series. I'm trying to do something that's that's more about like the the not so much spectator sport but but love of engineering. If people want to build stuff, they want interesting challenges to build. You know, that's that's what I'm trying to do. I, I want people to be able to field a competitive vehicle for less than 10 grand. Racing is an exaggeration though. There weren't actually any races that weekend, and with no qualifying rules, the event attracted a motley crew. Investors, high-end parts suppliers, and two guys with the Power Wheels car. A lot of these cars couldn't even make it around the track on their own. It was more of an opportunity for drivers and engineers to come test their technology, find potential partners or customers, or just trade notes with fellow enthusiasts. This event at Thunder Hill, I think, is incredibly valuable to the autonomous community because there's not many times where you can have a track day for this sort of thing. It's still really new. I mean, a lot of this technology, you hear it in the news all the time, but there's still a lot of testing miles. There's still a lot of things that need to be done. And the reason why I think this is fantastic is that, I mean, racing has made innovations for vehicles for the past 100 years. I mean, we're, this weekend's the Indy 500. It started in 1911, the average speed was 70 miles an hour. So now it's over 220 miles an hour. That right there is proof of how motorsports are technology movers. So what's really interesting about this event is that we're on one way of looking at, we're just reinventing the wheel, right? There's, there's nothing here that Google hasn't already done. You can take a Google autonomous car and put it on this racetrack and it'll do absolutely fine. And I think the point is exactly the same point that Jobs and Wozniak had when they had the Homebrew Computing Club. You know, the Apple II was not the first computer or the best computer, it was probably the worst computer, but it took a different evolutionary path. You know, unlike, you know, the mainframe getting, you know, faster, smaller, etc., this the PC ended up going in a different direction. And the hope here is that this will go in a different direction. Then we're not just going to end up with another Google autonomous car. We're going to do something that Google wouldn't dare or want to do. Tens of thousands of people are dying every day, right, in the globe um, because of automated technologies are not enabling to save their lives, right? And for me personally, I also have a special needs child, right? A special needs child that will probably never be able to actually drive his car by himself. So this can enable him to live a normal life, and, and I'm not alone there. So we're not just racing cars here. I think that we're really changing the future and, and adding quality of life to, to millions of people in the world. As the technology advances over the next few years, we'll definitely be watching self-driving races. Next year, there's an all-electric autonomous race launching called Robo Race. Will the self-racing car series be a DIY alternative? Maybe, but that's still at least a few years off. First, these teams will have to teach their cars to make it around the track. Then, the self-racing car series might actually be a race.